people as well. Update from Crystal Gosnell. Okay, well we'll start we'll start over again. Um, there we go. Now we got some sound. Um, so I got some announcements we're going to do tonight. I want to say welcome to what's wrong with this cord. Uh, there we go. Say welcome to uh, Dale Bennett, who's going to help me this evening, and the folks in our live studio audience. Um, mentioned them earlier, but you couldn't hear me, so we're glad to have Stuart Scott and Ruby Weeks and Eddie Sherman, and behind the camera, Matt Helsley this evening. So we appreciate him uh, making this happen. I shared that we do have a devotional by Charles Stanley for In Touch uh, on the on the table for anybody that's interested. Uh, Holy Bible, Family Bible Project, if you have an old family Bible, um, the National Daughters of the American Revolution would like to help you, uh, the Narapasa chapter would like to help you preserve some of that, and uh, by taking some pictures and they can digitize it, that's on the table back there too. Uh, Crystal and Raphael John, um, information and updates about their ministry, that'll be on the bulletin board. Also coming up next Thursday evening, a week from tomorrow, Tomorrow night, benefit concert for Sunshine Ministries. WBTX turned 50 years old today. Dale, that's hard to believe. That means 20 years before I was born, they started their, no, I don't, I wish. Um, <laughs> but uh, 1228 today, 50 years ago, they started their first broadcast. And um, there will be a benefit concert for that ministry uh, next Thursday at Harrisonburg First Assembly of God, um, and that's going to feature the Promised Land Quartet uh, and the Hoppers. And it's no ticket required. It's a free will uh, donation uh, for that. Six o'clock, and if anybody can put up a, a poster somewhere, I've got some of those. Also tonight, I want to give you um, an update from Samaritan's purse. Where did I put that? I don't think this is the latest. I got a, a more recent one. I'll have to see if I can find this um, and share that with you. I'll just hold off on that. Um, another comedy night is coming up. Christian comedian Bob Smiley, who has been on the Focus on the Family program and so forth, Saturday, June 25th and Sunday 26th over at the church at Skyline. Um, and that is a ticketed event. Information will be on the bulletin board about how you could get tickets for that. Um, also, we've got the latest edition of the American Family Association a magazine called The Stand. A lot of great articles in there about uh, current events and so forth, and so that will be on the table out there as well. In this month's um, Decision Magazine from Billy Graham uh, Evangelistic Association, there's an article about Virginia's own uh, Winsome Sears from uh, Winchester, and a great article about her, and uh, she tells us there that she and Governor Youngkin often pray together uh, before their meetings and, and about their constituents and all of that, and she tells the story about how there was a time in her life when she wasn't uh, participating in church and about how God uh, convicted her of that. She said, uh, my daughter, um, she's going to grow up without knowing me, God said, and she's going to blame you. And she said, right then I know we've got to find a church and introduce her to God. And it's a great article. I uh, encourage you to uh, pick up a Decision magazine. I'll put that on the table out there and um, you can catch that up. Um, kind of a warning to um, parents that I remember when I was growing up, we had those uh, book fairs at school, and they sent home the flyers. You could order books. You remember yep. those? Oh, Dale? yeah. I remember those. Um, well, just uh, be careful. Scholastic, which is one of the big ones that yeah. does that, um, have a number of books now that they are making available at their book fairs, as well as sending home in their flyers featuring transgenderism, LGBT, uh, for just little kids. I was going to say, that was one of the top ones, the Scholastic. Scholastic. Yeah, oh, that was very, the top, top one when I was in school. It still is. It's, it's very, 
uh, popular. So parents, grandparents, be careful um, about that. Let me mention also uh, someone connected to law enforcement, uh, as I shared in church, was talking about the increase in fentanyl use uh, here in Shenandoah County. And um, just want to remind you to remind your friends and neighbors about Celebrate Recovery here at Antioch. Every Tuesday starts at 7 p.m., and uh, it's a great ministry to anybody um, that may be battling an addiction or a hang-up or a hurt uh, somewhere along the way. And so it's a great, it's confidential, and um, it's Christ-centered, and so encourage you to come or pass that information on to somebody else that you may know uh, that can benefit from that. That. Um, also, uh, just this was now uh, Tuesday, last uh, Tuesday, a little, maybe two weeks ago. Anyway, I got an email from our state senator, um, Mark Warner, bragging about the fact that he was going to support a bill in the U.S. Congress that would uh, protect the right to abortion basically up until delivery. And he indeed did vote for that. Um, and I emailed him back. I said, please don't email me bragging about uh, that type of thing. I don't want you to take that stand. And uh, if you do, don't put it in my face. Anyway, a um, lot going on in that regard. And so uh, be in prayer about that. Finally tonight, as far as those t my, my stuff here, I've, I've worked my way through an article that I found on um, uh, archaeological dig, uh, what may very well be Sodom. You know about Sodom and Gomorrah from Genesis 18 and 19, and um, this article I think was in Christianity Today. Um, it talks here about um, formations associated with intense heat dated to about the right time when the Bible says that took place. 21 experts from 19 research institutions said that it looked like some kind of a massive airburst or comet, similar to what happened over Russia in 1908. Um, also talks about uh, how high the heat was. Um, it melted some of the pottery, turned it into glass, and bubbled as if it was boiling and so forth. And so really, really kind of, if anybody like to see that, I, I could share that article with you. Um, the, the longer we live, the more we see that uh, God is very much at work and revealing and confirming his word that we know to be true to begin with. Remind you that we need helpers for Vacation Bible School, uh, so let Becky know how you can help. We need uh, folks that would be willing to serve in our nursery on Sunday morning, um, both services, and so let us know how you can serve there. Um, if you would like to be on the email list for Michael Cooley's updates and you're not, please let me know. We'll get your, uh, your email to him. Prayer meeting this coming Sunday evening at 630. Encourage everybody to come and participate in that. Um, and also graduate recognition this Sunday in both services, so be aware of that. Homework, don't forget to read 1 Samuel 17 for this coming Sunday. Uh, we'll be looking at that, the story of David and Goliath. Um, joys tonight. Um, let's see, we've got uh, the Adams say, praise God for safe travels. They made it safely back, and so uh, we're glad for that. Um, we, um, let's see what other joys may have come in. Um, Diane says, I got my uncle, moved into his room at long-term care today, got everything out of his apartment. Praise God, and so we're thankful and blessed about that. Um, uh, yes, Matt. Um. Praise be to God. That's exactly right. I heard the same report ahead of time. We were supposed to get some tornadoes and hail and, and all that. And thank the Lord it didn't come. And um, all of us are grateful for that. And certainly uh, someone that's in the insurance business is That's exactly what I was thinking, too. Spoken from a true insurance man. <laughs> no, I, but, you know, the warnings that morning look, ugh. Um, uh, Rhonda says, thankful for my family and for God's protection, God's grace, God's everlasting love and mercy. Amen. And praise God. Uh, absolutely. It was good to see her in church. Is Rhonda Sherman? Yes, Rhonda Good to Shelton. see her last Sunday. Uh -huh. I mean, I mean Shelton, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. They're all Shermans. Uh, so. But yeah, good to see her Sunday. It was. Uh, she and Frank were here for mm -hmm. the early service and uh, glad to see them. 
Um, let me share some other uh, joys that have come across the prayer chain. We did have a lot of guests with us on Sunday, uh, a lot of family members for people that were being baptized, but some others besides that, and so we're grateful. Uh, joy for the banquet on uh, Saturday, the ladies' banquet, and thanks mm-hmm. to Dale and the other men that uh, has helped to serve that. I think uh, Stuart and Eddie uh, were also part of the, the servers there and the, the preparation and all that. Um, the hymn sing on Friday night down at Damaritown Brethren, uh, the total for that for weekday religious education now stands at $2,800. And so praise be Thank to God. God. Appreciate Matt uh, coming down and sharing music in that as well. And um, it was a, a great time. We're thankful that Lori Eaton's surgery went well and George Glading got along good with his surgery yesterday, hoping to come home on Saturday. Um, we're thankful that Lucille Fadley is off of the ventilator. Keep Lucille pray in your prayers. Lord. She's still in CCU, and so pray for her. Um, remember the uh, Roma. Um, we're, we're thankful that Roma got along good with her cataract surgery. She did have two doctor's appointments today and uh, praying that they went well. We're thankful that Betty Wolverton got home. Uh, also, Mike Klein's surgery uh, went well yesterday. Continue to pray for Mike um, as he battles COPD and waits for the results of those um, the biopsies uh, of the, in, the items that they took. Uh, a great joy for the baptisms on Sunday. How many, Dale? Seven. Seven baptisms. Seven. That's a good biblical number, isn't yes, it? It is a good yeah. biblical number. And uh, so praise God for that. Pray for those young people yeah, as they grow, that they would stay faithful and that we would help them uh, set good examples and help them to stay faithful. Um, Carson Clark is back home after spending a brief time, and uh, last Wednesday we were together. He was in the hospital, and so we're glad he's back home. Um, also thankful that uh, Freddie Reedy is back in the water truck. Barbara Kibler got a good report, and we're thankful for that. Um, we're thankful that Linda Hawkins' legs are doing better, and uh, she didn't have any pain at all uh, after we prayed last Wednesday, and another prayer group that she Amen. has from Georgia uh, prayed as well. Leslie Helsley shared with us this morning she will not need surgery, and so we're thankful uh, for that. Um, let me also praise God that um, on Sunday somebody handed me a check in response to Michael Helsley's time with us last Wednesday uh, to provide a truck, uh, $5,000 for the uh, Hel- folks in... Cooley. S- what's that? Helsley or Cooley? Mike Cooley. Did yeah. I say Mike Helsley? You said Mike Helsley. I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Um, I see Matt Helsley setting up there, Michael <laughs> Cooley and Holly uh, for their Africa work. And so the check was given $5,000 to uh, provide a truck. Amen. And so we, it's an amen for sure. And so thank the Lord. Folks from Antioch uh, have drilled a couple wells over there now, provided motorcycles and a truck. And um, praise God, we get to partner in that. Let me share one other uh, joy tonight. Um, the uh, Monday night, the Covenant Brethren Church Executive Board had their monthly meeting and um, received five new congregations to bring the total to 67 congregations. That's more than twice the number of congregations CBC had one year ago. Um, CBC isn't even one year old, uh, one and a half years old yet. We're still only about 17 months. And the exciting news is that we have three sister congregations now right close to us uh, as of Monday night. Uh, We have the St. Luke Brethren Church out here at Walker Store that is now a CBC congregation. We're grateful for Calvary Church down in Winchester that is now a CBC congregation. And New Life Church up at Mount Solon is a CBC congregation. So... um, Praise God for that, and uh, looking forward to some more in the near future. Um, We also took in uh, what is so far the oldest CBC congregation. Uh, It was actually established in the 1700s by Conrad Beisel um, as an offshoot of the effort of Cloister up in Pennsylvania. Bermudian is near Gettysburg, uh, Pennsylvania, and so we're thankful for them. Uh, um, Membership. 50, over 5,700 members now. Uh, again, that's about three times what we had a year ago today. So uh, we're grateful for that. Um, I think that's all of the um, praises that have come in. Um, yes, Ruby?
Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Sister Ruby gave a testimony about um, she'd been fighting allergies uh, for many months. And uh, last Wednesday night when she stayed for um, practice for AWE, um, she didn't cough. And God enabled that. And then again on Sunday morning um, to be able to share and sing. And so we give him the praise and the glory. Uh, anybody else have a praise that's in person tonight? Else? Um, Laura Ramos says, uh, praise the Lord for all the works he is doing, not just here, but also in Africa. Absolutely. Um, it's amazing. Um, probably in the next few years, um, by and large, a large majority of the worldwide Christian population, as Michael Cooley reminded us, will be in Africa. Um, not because of, um, decline here, although that is the case, but because of the rapid growth of the church um, below the equator. It's uh, really quite something. Um, let's lift up concerns tonight. I know a number of those came in, and so let me go back and see if I can uh, pick those up. Um, make sure we try not to lose anything. Um, of course, remember Diane's uncle as he makes that adjustment. Um, the Blyze says, keep my oldest brother Ray Casimore in prayer. He's been admitted to Sentara RMH for heart-related issues, so remember Ray. Um, remember Glenda in your prayers as she awaits an appointment down in northern Virginia. Um, remember an un unspoken request, uh, probably several of those tonight. Um, let's look... Um, Pray for uh, Frank Shelton's family and the loss of his grandmother, Molly Shelton, and his uncles and aunts as they handle this loss. I uh, wasn't aware of that. So so sorry about that, Brother Frank and family, uh, for that passing. Remember Deb Tangren in your prayers, and so lift her up to the Lord. Um, Josh Sherman is still having quite a bit of pain. Uh, Rhonda reports, and so continue to remember Josh and lift him up, if you would. Um, let me share some of our weekly prayer emphasis, pray for VBS, that's coming up now uh, in just about a month. Remember John Morgan, uh, Doug and Carol Klein's brother-in-law, as he is no longer receiving treatments, and so pray for uh, Doug, and also pray for Larry Polk. Uh, Larry's waiting on a date for surgery, and so we'll lift him up. Laura, Linda Holler is back in uh, RMH, and and uh, Benny Andes had a test today, and so we're praying for good results from that. Remember Bob Miller uh, as he battles uh, macular degeneration. Um, also, we want to remember Linda Hawkins' sister, Donna Fulmer, who was in the hospital with the heart problems. Um, and remember uh, those who are having difficulty right now because of the economic situation, uh, extremely uh, high prices for everything. Remember Ned Conklin and your prayers, Linda Hodges' dad. Uh, many of you remember or know Lynn, uh, Ned, and so pray for him. Remember my sister Judy. She has uh, her second cataract surgery tomorrow for the other eye. Uh, continue to remember Nancy Moomaw and Buck Spence as Buck uh, continues his radiation treatments. Um, the folks in Ukraine, and also remember Donna Babcock, uh, who is in the Winchester Hospital, hoping to get home here in the next uh, day or two. And so please remember her um, and lift her up to the Lord in your prayers. Um, let's see, uh, anything else uh, came in here tonight? Anybody in person? Ruby?
Remember uh, George and Ruby Weeks, they uh, have to find another place to live. Their place is being sold, and they've got to be out by June 1, and they don't have anything right now. So if any of you all know of any ideas or leads, uh, let us know. We'll make sure they're aware, but um, they're going to be meeting with a realtor, so uh, look at it, putting things in storage. And so please, they, they just want to be where God wants them to be, and so uh, pray for them. Um, other, uh, other concerns tonight? Yes, Eddie. Oh, my lands. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, remember Carolyn Sherman in your prayers. Um, Eddie shares with us that she's really struggling right now, just emotionally, um, depressed and so forth, and thankful for four, four visitors today that she had, uh, which was a real blessing, but uh, please keep Carolyn in your prayer. Not, not eating well, losing weight, and, and so please remember Sister Carolyn. And uh, you get a chance, give her a call, drop by, uh, let send, her know a card. send a card, let her know that you're thinking about her. Um, thank you, Eddie. I, I, I did miss that one somewhere along the line. So thanks for um, reminding us of it. Any others tonight before we pray? Dale, I'm going to put your work tonight. All right. Um, would, you, uh, would you pray and lift these things up to the Lord this evening? Our great and glorious God, Lord, we do thank you so much for this beautiful day. Father, we thank you for this beautiful weather that you've been providing. And Father, we just thank you for the movement of your Holy Spirit throughout Antioch and throughout the community, Lord, and into people. Father, we do come to you with a lot of concerns and, and prayer requests, Father, that's been on our lips to here tonight. And Father, we know that you know each and every one of them. Father, I do ask a special prayer for each one that's been touched up and lifted up here this evening. And Father, I just thank you so much that we have our hope in you, Father, the one that gives us the hope to know that our prayers are being answered, Lord, according to your will and according to your time. And Father, I thank you so much for that. Father, I pray for um, uh, our VBS that we're looking to come up, Lord. I pray that many helpers are raised up for VBS, Lord. I pray that the, uh, the load is lightened off of uh, Miss Becky and, Lord, that so many people just join in and like they did for the blast father and we continue to give you praise for that and uh for the blast program and father most importantly the seven youth that came out of lord that uh, gave their life to you but then omitted it out in front of everyone lord with through baptism that they confessed that outward expression of of their love for you and i thank you lord that that uh, happened and father we rejoice with you on that and father just so many other things that we could are thankful for lord that we Forget to mention the, the money for the truck for the, Mike Cooley and all his great work that he's doing for you and your kingdom in Africa. And, Father, I just, um, the, the numbers of CVC climbing, Lord, I, I just pray that you continue to bless the, 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 or, uh, the church body, Lord, that is staying focused to the word of God. And, Father, there's a lot of churches going around with uh, the voting and, and which direction they need to go. I pray for their discernment and their understanding, Lord, that they uh, make the right decisions according to you lead them, Father, and not by the influence of man, but by the, you, the Holy Spirit. Father, I just thank you so much, and I just ask it all in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Dale, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, um, Penny says, grateful for Dale visiting Memory Lane. Uh, thank you for that and uh, appreciate his faithful service to us. We are in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, maybe for the last time tonight. We'll see how fast we move along, but um, if you're not already there, I would invite you to turn there. And um, we've been, it's been a little while since we've been there. We had the young people giving their speeches uh, two weeks ago, and then last week, as we said, we had Michael and Holly Cooley with us. Um, but then uh, 2 Thessalonians was written by Paul uh, following his establishment of the church there in Thessalonica. And um, 
He's encouraging the church to stay true and faithful, reminding them that no, in fact, Jesus has not yet come, but he is coming. And when he comes, you need to be prepared by working fervently and being obedient. Um, Let me read verses 6 through 12 of chapter 3 uh, that will bring us up to where we uh, will be here this evening. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers, to keep away from every brother who is idle and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to make ourselves a model for you to follow. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. And um, that's kind of where we had left off last time, and Paul was telling them, you know, if you don't work, the people in the church, if they don't work, they shouldn't eat. The church has no obligation to, uh, to help them if they're able to work, and they won't do it. They're not to sponge off the others. Uh, Paul himself worked night and day, he said, so that it, he would not be a burden to someone else. And we talked about how our work ethic says a lot about uh, our Christianity. Last time we were talking about this thing of being busybodies. Um, busybodies can cause a lot of harm with the gossip and so forth that they stir up. And Paul said, you know, you all need to settle down and earn their own bread. Um, and we talked about how being idle can certainly uh, cause problems. And an idle mind, idle hands are the devil's workshop. And so that brings us to uh, verse 13 where Paul says, As for you, brothers... Never tire of doing what is right. And um, that's really where we want to begin tonight. Uh, Never tire of doing what is right. So let me ask you this question. Why do we sometimes get tired of doing what is right? Send in your answers to that question. Why do we sometimes get tired of doing what is right? And any of you all in person, you'd like to start us off, we'll uh, hear your answers and then hold on to them until we hear from our folks online. That's, that's often uh, the way it is. Uh, Miss Ruby was talking about being discouraged by being attacked by some others uh, within the church that she attended uh, earlier in life and some, some hurt that came from that. Um, uh, Matt says, uh, it seems thankless at times that you work and work and work and sometimes nobody ever seems to notice or even criticizes what you are doing. And um, that can be one of those. Getting some answers in over here. A uh, guy says burnout. Uh, Diane says physical exhaustion. Um, Penny says because of our own selfishness, our desire to do what we want rather than what God wants. Um, Nancy says pain, uh, which can certainly uh, be an issue. We get tired and, and uh, sometimes uh, decide to step back. Uh, Bob Miller says sometimes I feel like I'm beating my head against a wall. Uh, It's personal, and um, Rhonda says sometimes getting taken advantage of. Um, Dale, what do you think tonight? 
Well, I just think about everything they said, they covered everything. It, it, people get this impression that um, of Jesus, that unless you truly know Jesus, that being a Christian is, is an easy walk, and it's not an easy walk by no <laughs> means. It is, it is physically demanding. It is spiritually demanding, and it's, you can grow tired. You can grow tired and weary, especially if you are knowing that you're doing and watching what, what Jesus' word teaches us, and we're trying to apply that in life, and we see great rewards going out to what we call evil, but we can't re forget what Jesus says in Matthew about the sun will rise on the evil as, as well as the good. And, but it, it does get very distracting and, and very uh, exhausting trying to do what's right and to see what we think in the worldly form, people prosper that don't really, what do you, how you say, give a hoot, yeah. you know? Uh, so, yeah, that, I mean, that's very, that's very exhausting. But we just got to keep on knowing who we're doing it for and what we're doing it for. I think, uh, I think you're right that, um, you know, sometimes people say, well, if you're doing the Lord's work, you shouldn't get tired. Well, <laughs> we have the same physical bodies. We have same 24 hours a day. And uh, yes, we have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and he can help us and he does help us. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, Jesus sometimes told his disciples, you need to come, you need to come away a while. Um, and, and he went up into the mountain. He went, he didn't, he didn't stay with the people all the time. You got to you got to have some time, and so sometimes you, you do get tired even of doing what is right. Um, sometimes, as, as a guy says, <laughs> you, you, you get burned out, um, and so it's, it's okay to take a, a break and, um, and then to come back to it later. As Nancy said, pain. Um, some folks uh, live in pain constantly, and we have no idea what they're going through, and uh, even as they don't know what we're going through. And so it's important um, to, uh, to recognize that. And just to go back, to, I think, to something that Matt said, one of the things we can help with is, is to say thank you to people um, regularly so that they don't feel like they've been taken for granted, um, so that they don't feel um, used uh, and taken advantage of, like Rhonda said there a minute ago. Um, so that they are appreciated. Um, Penny says, I agree with what everyone said. I struggle with doing what I know I should do for the Lord while juggling what life throws at me. Um, and I think, uh, Penny, I think you're speaking for all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we, we do what we can, but sometimes there's just a lot of other demands that come along in life and sometimes there are demands with our family and we have responsibilities there uh, that obviously our families are of God and um, we want to we want to honor our parents and, and care for our children bring up nurture and admonition of the Lord uh, take care of our spouses and so forth um, but uh, sometimes it's difficult to do other things we want to do more than we're able to um, many times um, the Doman say it's not easy, but we need to keep on keeping on, um, and um, and and sometimes and sometimes uh, somebody gave me some good advice one time. They said sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. Sometimes you you just you just need to in order to keep on keeping on you you got to pace yourself. If you uh, if you go 100 miles an hour all the time, uh, sooner or later um, that's going and to. I'm being pretty. Spiritual every day, huh? I said, then I'm being yeah. pretty spiritual every day <laughs> with your naps. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh huh.
<laughs> Amen. Yeah. God is good, he, and he, he does answer prayer. Um, we do need to encourage each other. Uh, Ruby reminds us, and that's just, it's vitally important. Um, work is tiring. God's work is tiring. And so just because it's God's work, uh, you know, there's a blessing there, but it doesn't mean it's, it's not tiring. And so um, I think that's uh, important to, to recognize. And sometimes, and I think, you know, part of Paul's writing here, um, we get tired of doing what is right because sometimes we see other people that aren't doing what is right. And they seem to be getting along. I think you maybe mentioned that earlier without, um, you know, you wonder, why am I working so hard? You know, that you, you see idlers that are um, having the same uh, or, or better return. And, um, you know, it reminded me of <laughs> the folks coming in over the border that are being handed free phones. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, why am I? paying my own phone bill, why am I working hard, and, and uh, so forth. And so sometimes um, sometimes those kind of things make us question, and sometimes you say, like, well, why am I doing what is right? Let me, let me just uh, give up. Um, the King James Version says, but ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing, which reminds me, of course, of Galatians 6, 9, one of my all-time favorite verses where he says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Um, and so it's the importance of um, keep doing what is right. Uh, take some breaks every now and then when you need to. And um, I think that's, uh, that will help out. Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, one of the verses I know that, um, the passages I know many of you all will be familiar with. It says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even young people grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And so uh, as we depend on the Lord, he's our strength and he's our stay, um, and he can give us uh, special um, encouragement. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, um, Dear brothers, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because, because you know that the labor in the Lord is not in vain. Um, it's not going to be wasted. It's not going to be useless. And I, I, think, I think that um, we also can grow weary when we take it. I, I know when I first started in the ministry or even before that, um, you know, I was... I don't want to say always involved in something. But it wasn't until I went to my ministry classes that, you know, that you have to sit back and think about why are you involved in all this. And if I had to put it in perspective today, more so then than it is now, because uh, I've learned and grown in my relationship with God, that I think it was selfish personal recognition that I was doing all that. You know, it wasn't because I was so faithful and, and obedient. I mean, it got good glamour out in the in the world, should I say? But if you've lost that purpose and that meaning that you're doing it for the kingdom of God, I think you grow tired and weary, and you can keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself, not because you want great rewards in heaven or you want to do what's right, but because you want your name broadcasted out there amongst everything. You the, know, the praise of men. Yeah, and and uh, uh, and. Yeah. and, and it was, a, it was a good learning lesson uh, with that class. I remember taking care of yourself. You know, and yeah, self-care. And, yeah. and um, you know, if, if you don't take care of yourself, nobody else probably is going to. And so uh, you do have to set some limits and draw some boundaries and, um, and, and make sure that you take care of, uh, of your own self. Um. So let me, let me follow that up here and ask the uh, next question. How can you encourage someone who may be getting tired of doing what is right? What are some practical ways that uh, we can encourage somebody that maybe is t getting tired 
of doing what is right. Send in your answers to that question. Um, Dale, you want to take a crack at it first, and then I'll invite others here if they want to respond to it. I would certainly say to encourage is, is to pull them to the side or something. First of all, pray with them. And encourage them to take some time to let that fire burn. You know, you can smother a fire by stoking it too much, but you need some space and some air in there to let that fire burn. And you know as well as I do, even the pastors throughout the community and, and, and just servants of God in general can just keep stoking the fire and, and never stepping back to let it burn. And um, I think through prayer and, and definitely encouraging them, you know, look at the Word. You know, it, you're not... You're not going to get in trouble for saying no. You know, you just got to do it. Encourage them. But encourage them and let them know that they're do what they've done is a great thing, you know. Yeah. But they're only one person. And um, that's the same way with, when the church, you know, even though you, you see it in not just all churches, you know, you get, you know, what, what's the old saying? 10% of the people do 90% of the work. <laughs> And that can wear them 10% out. It does. It and, absolutely and, does. And so, uh, you know, we, we try to encourage you to keep on and pray for more step up like we did for Blast. I yes. mean, we had a bunch of people in here for absolutely. Blast. You know, years ago, we couldn't get hardly anybody. Yep. So God answers, and, and it takes the load off of the ones and, and let them know that, hey, let God do his work. You don't have to do it all. <laughs> let, him, let him find the people. And, Amen. And, and so they don't grow tired. Um. A couple of uh, answers that have come in here. Uh, Matt shares, tell them you notice. Um, e even though maybe they uh, should know that, it's good to be reminded of that and, and let absolutely. them know. Um, absolutely. Um, show your appreciation, Diane says. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to go one step further, Diane, and say how. What are ways that you can show that appreciation so Respond back to them. Penny says, not ask them to do more. Understand their need to take a break. Thank them for what they do. Um, some, sometimes we do that. Um, we find somebody that's, that's willing to do something, and, and we find out that they're willing to do something else. They're willing to do something else, and, and we keep asking, <laughs> and, and then burnout burnout comes. And so uh, understand... Um, individuals uh, need to take a break eternal rewards and that's important um, and sometimes we need to remind each other of those eternal rewards um, because it's that that is important but sometimes it's just good to have some some earthly encouragement um, until that eternal reward internal reward comes like a uh, white coconut cake you help yourself I'm just throwing that out there yeah no white coconut cake for me, <laughs> all right? Um, Penny says, exactly, Dale, encourage them and allow them to have time. The Domen say, I agree with Dale, we need to encourage each other. Bob says, if we lift them up in prayer and encourage them to keep on keeping on, uh, I need that. We all need that. We absolutely do. Um, and uh, Penny says, I notice you, Matt. <laughs> um, and she says, thank you. Um, and so this thing of, of praying for them, and let them know you're praying yep, for them. Absolutely. Um, that somebody notices and somebody is, is uh, going before the Father for them. It reminds me of that story in the Old Testament where um, Joshua was fighting the battle with the Amalekites down on the battlefield. And Moses was up on the mountain with his arms up, and as long as his arms were up, they were winning. But you can't keep your arms up for so long, and they start to fall down. And, and Aaron and her came on each side of him, held his arms up. And so sometimes we need to come along beside our brothers and sisters and hold up their arms. and Let them know that's what, you know, prayer and, um, and encouragement to, to let them know that. Um, and uh, anybody, uh, anybody in the... In person here, how how can we encourage somebody that may be getting tired of doing what is right? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> if 
if there's a need in the ministry, um, you know, uh, offer to help them. Uh, I know with the children's ministry, sometimes it's just a, a need for supplies, uh, somebody to help keep an eye on the kids. Uh, music, the music ministry, it may be just donating music uh, or, or just, you know, helping out some other way. Uh, if you look for the need, it, you will see it. Yeah. And, you know, God will bless you. Uh, but he tells us when we turned uh, Isaiah chapter 40 a while ago, he says, comfort ye my people. <laughs> yep, so that's right. We're honoring God when we uh, help others in that way. Absolutely. Um, Diane came back with a suggestion here. Um, invite them to celebrate recovery. It is refreshing. And um, so that is one of those ways to be refreshed, um, to um, sometimes just give them, give them some time off and just say, you know what, I, I know you've been working, if, I know you've been working hard. I think it kind of goes with what um, uh, Miss Ruby was saying, you know, look, I'm going to take over for you this Sunday. I'll, I'll do the nursery this time. You, you step aside or I'll... Um, teach Sunday school this Sunday, whatever it is. Um, you know, I, one of the things that, uh, you know, what can you do to help them out? How can you encourage and bless them? I'm hearing your brother, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. George, one of the things that I've noticed uh, is a lot of the people who are that 10%, they also have a hard time, um, like they're they're not going to, step away unless someone comes up and relieves them and yep. so you know I, I know sometimes I can be like that and I'll keep going till I'm about dead and but if someone comes up and says I'll do that and you're like all right <laughs> running out the door, so. waiting for somebody you thought thought you never ask and many times they don't ask and so yeah um the Domen say encourage and pray for each other. Penny says, uh, yes, Ruby, offer to help. Also take time to talk to them, ask about what's going on with them, and pray with them. Um, uh, and so never tire of doing what is right. Uh, the Amplified Bible says, um, as for you, brethren, do not become weary or lose heart in doing right, but continue in well-doing without weakening. And so um, let's help each other on that, on that regard and uh, encourage one another. As it says in the book of Hebrews, uh, spur one another on to love and good deeds. And um, that's an opportunity to do that. Um, let's go on with uh, verses 14 and 15 tonight. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3, he says, If anyone does not obey our instruction in this letter, take special note of him. Do not associate with him in order that he may feel ashamed. Yet do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, Paul says if they don't listen, um, don't associate with them. Do you think Paul's discipline here is too harsh when he says don't associate with them? What are your thoughts uh, about that? Send in your answers to that question. Anybody in person want to respond while we're waiting? I, I don't feel like it's too harsh at all because I think what he's saying is you don't know what you got until it's gone. So, you know, as far as the brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, he's not telling you, you know, like later on we'll see, he says, don't treat them like an enemy. But if you are... If you back away from them and they're forced to do things and see things on their own, they maybe realize their either their selfishness or their lack of their, you know, respect for other people. And, you know, especially if you start seeing your brothers and, you know, I remember my best friend Mark, there come a point in my life when I was backsliding from, from God so much that he just said, I'm, he just stepped away from me. And for a couple of years, he done nothing but pray for me. And, you know, it was so bad on my part that we passed each other in the same boat on the same river, and I couldn't even face him because I, I was so ashamed of myself. But then God straightened that all out and got us called back together again. But 
I think that you need to have that. I, and not that he hated me, not right. that he was a sh- mad at me or anything like that, but there comes a point that you just have to, to break away, let God do his work, and let a brother or sister see what God wants from them. And if they don't have somebody helping them along the way all the time, that, um, you know, God works faster if it's not being done for you all the time. So. Yeah, yeah uh, to give, give them a chance to... Uh, to repent and some space to do that. Um, the reference that he's talking about, the instruction in this letter is, you know, to work and, and not to be idle and all. And he says, if people don't follow that, then um, don't associate with them. Um, uh, others, uh, uh, Ruby, did you have a comment you were going to yes, make? Yes, I did. Right. Um, I, not only that, we're in, if we're hanging around them too much, like if they're a very negative person, they don't see God working. Uh, how long before that negativity affects us? Uh, we are affected by by others, even when we don't realize it sometimes. Uh, yeah, keep praying for them. And if they contact you, encourage them in the Lord. But do your best not. I mean, you know, you got to keep the 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 whole armor of God on, and you've got to maybe be the right example for them, but uh, don't go out of your way to hang around them. Um, one of the the things that uh, sometimes we become aware of is becoming an enabler, uh, where we are, we enable someone else's bad behavior. And um, we, we've got to be careful about doing that, and uh, we're not helping them, uh, even though we may feel like we're doing a great thing because we're helping somebody else when really we're not, we're not helping them. Um, and so uh, Penny says, uh, I think it means not to associate with people who will not repent, but also influence our behavior, which is what Ruby just said, that, you know, this kind of thing can be contagious. And, um, and, and we don't want it to be, we don't want it to be contagious. Um, Penny says, I agree with Ruby and, um, and Diane, it's sometimes a fine line between helping and enabling. It is. It's hard to know um, how, which is which sometimes. And um, we, that's where we need that Holy Spirit discernment to be able to say, Lord, help me to know how I can help without helping go the wrong way. Um, I was going to say on Paul's point here, you know, you're not going to help anybody work for their food if you're bringing them a meal every evening. That's you're right. Not, you're just, it's, you, it's, if he goes a couple of days without uh eating then he'll realize I, I need to do something get something get some food in my belly you know so yeah I, yeah you so as long as you're enabling them not going to uh, and some folks get pretty good at it where they'll put a guilt trip on you oh yeah and they'll say well um you're not helping me you must not be my friend um you've got food but you're not giving me any what, you know don't you care about me and and um, and so sometimes you got to separate and, and say, you know what, I love you like crazy. And if you really needed it, I would give you this food. But you can work. You can earn your own food. There's that more you can people, share with even else. in our own communities, come accustomed to just standing on the side of the road with a sign in their hands rather than go out to the next door right down there that says they got a job <laughs> because they say they can't work. But I can tell you one thing <laughs> if I could sit on a cooler, or whatever, for all day long, then my back's good enough to do something, you know. <laughs> Bernie think. says people engaged in bad behavior want others to do what they do. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, that, that's, that's exactly right. Um, and the Domans say, pray for God to show us how to help. And that is that, that Holy Spirit discernment and wisdom. Um, the early brethren <laughs> actually practiced something called the ban. Uh, B A N, where um, they would they would cut people off from fellowship um, if they were being if they persisted in disobedience, um, not from outsiders, but from those who claimed to be Christians, those who claimed they were they were brethren. Um, Alexander Mack, founder of the Brethren Movement, said of the ban, it is an essential and necessary part of the Church of Christ. There can be no Church of Christ without the ban. Otherwise, the devil and his leaven of wickedness would soon contaminate the good. Um, And that's uh, from 1708. Um, 
that goes all the way back to our founding, and that's something that's not very popular sometimes. It's, it's exceedingly painful, and no, nobody likes to do it, especially in this day and age where, well, you, you know, you're being intolerant and everything else. Um, but that was certainly what our founder had in mind. And last night, uh, Grover Dooling and I from the CBC were at a church, and uh, the question came up, as it usually does, what will keep the CBC from becoming like the COB in uh, 50 years? And, um, you know, we shared our perspective on that. But one way is, and we've already had to do some of this, is when churches or individuals are not abiding by the statement of faith, you have a conversation, and if they will not abide by that, then you have to say, uh, you know, you're going to have to step outside of the CBC um, until such time that you're, you're ready to step back in. And some of those conversations have already uh, had to take place, and, um, and so um, it's, it's just unfortunately one of those things that, that has to be done. Um, Guy says, like shunning in the Amish community is exactly is exactly what it is, um, and the goal is restoration. Uh, Matt reminds us it's it's not punishment, it's it's not ugliness, it's not hatefulness. All right? The goal is to restore that person, and that's what Paul has in mind here uh, when he says that. Um, and so uh, that's very important to keep in mind. Warren Wearsby says. Sin in the life of a believer always affects the rest of the church. As members of his body, we belong to each other and we affect each other. The bad example of a few saints can destroy the devotion and hinder the service of the rest of the church. Um, and uh, Tim Harvey, writing in the, uh, in the Brethren um, commentary, he says, Surely some say the church should not deny any person the fellowship of the church. Some would object that this is not the loving thing to do. Others would say that it is not our place to judge. However, to think this way, no activity, no matter how detrimental to the life of the church, would ever get addressed. Um, and uh, in fact, Paul is telling them here in Thessalonica, it is in your place to judge. It is in your, if they're being idle and they're not working and they're not following this direction, then you are to use that judgment and, and act in such a way. You're not condemning them. You're not condemning them to hell. That's a different kind of a judgment. Absolutely no. We don't do that. Jesus does that. But um, he also says the proper application of biblical admonishment does not break fellowship in the church. Sinful action breaks fellowship. And so let's be clear about that. I think that's very, very good observation. Um, it's, it's not the, the church leaders coming and saying um, the ban is in effect or whatever you want to call it. The sinful activity is what broke that fellowship um, whenever that took place. Um, sometimes Penny says we need to know we're heading in the wrong direction. Satan would encourage us to continue that way. We need each other to lovingly direct us in the way God would have us go. And, um, and that's true of every single believer. Any, anyone can start going down the wrong way. That's one reason we need a church. Uh, that's one reason we need a body to belong to because we can we can help each other. Um, Lone Ranger Christians, uh, there, there's no example of that in the scripture, and uh, in fact, just the opposite. We're out of time. Um, the Domans say, love all of you and appreciate you, and the comments is helping each other. Uh, amen. So let's go ahead and uh, close with a word of prayer. We already went over a little bit, so sorry about that. God willing, we'll be back next week. Next Wednesday uh, will be our last study of this year. We'll finish out Second Thessalonians, and, um, and then we'll take a break until we're back together in the fall. One so, comment, though. They yeah. hear you preach on Sunday. They know you go over. <laughs> I'm going to have to I'm going to have to put the ban on him for that kind of stuff so
<laughs> Let's pray tonight before we go. Father, I thank you for being with us in our time this evening. And Lord, um, for bringing us together, those in person, those online, and wherever anybody might be tonight. We thank you, Lord, uh, even those in Haiti. We thank you for the bond of love that we share in Jesus Christ. And Lord, um, I pray for wisdom and understanding to know how to deal with uh, each other in the church and um, not ever to apply something like this lightly or uh, without, without grave thought, but Lord, at the, when it is needed to do so. And Father, we also pray for the encouragement and blessing of your Holy Spirit. We, we admit and confess tonight sometimes we get tired of doing what is right and um, help us to encourage each other. Help us to build one another up. Help us to uh, express our appreciation and say thanks um, and not take each other for granted. Bless each one that's been a part of our discussion tonight or those that will be. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to Matt uh, behind our camera tonight. Blessings to each of you uh, for being with us. Good night.